Okay, great. So now we're going to have the second talk of the morning uh, by Yun Tat. Please go ahead. Thanks, Yun Tat. Yeah, so this is a John Wolf with he Aditi and Santosh, and a very accurate picture of me. Uh, so this talk, I only have 20 slides, so I should have enough time to answer any people question. So please feel free to ask me, otherwise the talk will be too short. Uh, so this talk is again about this poem. I have been working on this poem for a while. You have a comment set. Given any points, you can tell whether a point is in the set or not it is the membership oracle. And we want to sample a point according to uniform distribution inside the K. Uh, this poem is well studied. In this talk, I try to show a picture of everyone. The first time I saw his name, so there's many picture here. Uh, as you can see, the running time is gradually improving. But one thing to be careful is the last results need to assume certain thing about the convert set. It does not apply to general convert set. So for general convert set, the previous best result is n to the four. And it is 2003. Uh, I will define what is well one later. We will use this result. But for this special case, we can get n cube. And in general, there is some belief, at least Santos believe that I am not sure if I believe. Santos believe for the general case, n cube is the best. Oh, this is the number of, we are measuring the time by the number of oracle. The total running time is higher because it's that you need to do something more. Uh, so in this talk, our research is this, we, for any convex set, uh, we can sample in n to 3.5 time. And if we assume KRS conjecture is n cube, uh, just to be more clear, say, let's say we are, I will define what is KRS conjecture. But if we assume KRS conjecture, in fact, almost, I'm not sure about those running time, but for this two running time, if under KRS, the running time is still M4 and M3. So this, this, this one is kind of special. Uh, we will explain why KRS does not improve for the general case before. Uh, we have the same running time if we care about instead of sample of points, we want to compute the volume. For example, if we want to get a one plus or epsilon, a multiplicative approximation to the volume, then the running time is 3.5 over epsilon square. Uh, epsilon square is necessary to est for estimating volume. Uh, so this is the result. Uh, I'm ignoring some log term here. There is some point log term. Uh, during the whole time, I ignore all the point log terms. Uh, so before talking about we our results, we need to cover some basics. Uh, so no quick question, yeah. and there's a lower bound of any sort? Uh, I I think Santos proof N square lower bound before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am not super sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lower bound is a very cool question if anyone can do. Mm -hmm. uh, so in some sense, this we sell if Santos belief is true, if n cube is the best, then this result is the best if KRS is true. So finally, I can forget about this problem. I should just focus on KRS. Uh, uh, yeah, so this few slides I have used too many times, but I will use that because it's covering the basics. So almost all the, the result in the previous slides based on this algo, called ball walk. So the algorithm is like this. Let's say you are starting at some point inside the set. Then you sample a point inside a ball of radius delta. Uh, if you sample a point inside, then you go to there. Otherwise, you, you forget about that point and sample again. So this is the ball walk. Uh, this walk is well defined for any set, even if it's long converse. But the core problem is if you apply this for long convex set, 
it can take forever to go from one to another one. If the sets have some bottleneck here, then it take forever to go to another part. So it may need work for a comma set. And and to measure the the performance of ball work, we need a constant called chicken constant. So for any set k, we divide the chicken constant phi k by this. You search over you have a set, you search over all subset of k s and you compute the uh, uh, ratio between the uh, intersection the this area over the volume of the smaller side and you search of you find the minimum one and this is the chicken constant uh, for example for a sphere the chicken constant will be large because you you can think chicken constant is measuring how difficult it is to cut the set into two and for sphere it is difficult to cut into two, you need to cut a lot of stuff here. Uh, but for a set like this, then the surface area here is small compared to the area, to, compared to the volume. Uh, so the general statement about uh, missing time of ball walk is like this. The running time is n over five square and delta square. So if the set is, if the chicken constant is larger, if it is harder to cut the set, it, the ball walk makes faster. And if the step size is larger, it also makes faster. Uh, here, I measure the number of steps is number of successful step that mean those steps you successfully go to the new point. And if you pick your step size too large, then you left, then you need to sample a lot of time in order to do one step. So you don't want to pick too large step size. So is, is epsilon the statistical distance to uniform? What is epsilon? Uh, this is the TV distance between your distribution and the, and, and the target distribution uniform. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing to be careful is the chicken constant is not a fine invariant. It can be arbitrary small even for comma set. For example, if the set look like this, then you can you can cut the set in the middle. The surface area here is one. The volume here is L. So the chicken constant is one over L. Uh, so we need to normalize the set a little bit. And as you will see, turns out in terms of algo, the most difficult part is to normalize the set. Uh, so we will normalize the set such that the covariant matrix is identity. Uh, and we call a set is isotropic if it is mean zero and the covariance is identity. Uh, notice that uh, people in mathematics usually define isotropic definition. So this is a slightly different definition. Uh, they usually have a slicing constant here somewhere. Uh, so one thing to notice is uh, if the convergence is isotropic, you can prove as long as delta is less than one forward n, the ball walk will success with constant probability at every step. And one forward n is tight for hypercube. Imagine if you are in hypercube, you randomly sample a point, then, then there is many coordinates close to the boundary because the independent sample, some coordinate will close to zero or one. And because of this, if your step size is too large, you're going to step outside. And that's why step size will scale uh, with N. If, if the dimension is larger, you need smaller step size. And if you put in this step size one of forward N to the previous film, then you will get this one in time. Uh, uh, to sample a point inside as a tropic convex set, it take n square over five square step. So if the set is already isotropic, then the only thing we need to study is the isotropic constant is the chicken constant of the set. Uh, but turns out the in terms of algo, the most difficult thing is to make a set isotropic. Uh, so Kanan, Nawaz, and Simnovich 
uh, make this conjecture for any isotropic common set, the Chicke constant is at least a universal constant. So if you put it pre in the previous results, then for isotropic common set, we can sample in n square step. Uh, percent of somehow we live for general common set, it should be n cube. Uh, yeah, so for this conjecture... Well, why, why not n squared? Uh, because, okay, the, the roughly, this is just a belief. It doesn't really have any reason. The roughly belief is this, uh, in order to make the, imagine, yeah, imagine the original, oh, imagine original, the set look like this is very weird. And uh, what you want to do is make it isotropic. And to do this, you need to estimate the covariant matrix of a body. And to estimate a uh, covariant matrix of a body is known, you need n sample. You need n sample in order to estimate the covariant matrix. And so, so in order to make something isotropic, you need n sample. And each sample, you should take n square step. That's why Santos belief is n cube. Yeah, but this is just a belief. Maybe someday someone proof we are totally wrong. It will be more uh, interesting if. But is is there a lower bound here for this? Uh, uh, I I think Santos proof uh, volume n square lower bound. I'm not sure for sample. But that's for isotropic. I, I don't think it implies uh, like so. So suppose you know that the best thing you can do the isotropic position is n squared. Still, does it yeah. imply that the best you can do is n cubed in general? Why? Uh, oh, you are asking. Oh, 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 you are asking if someone so in the isotropic case n square can we get n cube? Uh, okay. Uh, we know KLS implies n cube. I am not sure if isotropic n square implies KLS is correct. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my my firm need KLS instead of n square isotropic. Uh, oh yeah, uh, for the KLS congestion is more well studied than sampling. There is uh, the first longitudinal result is one over one n. Uh, people study one difficulty of KLS is at least originally you may thought one difficulty of KLS is if because you need to search over all set. What about if you only search over sphere, it turns out that quantity is measuring how close is the body with a sphere is some other quantity and turns out there's many results on here. And then I'll done so a very amazing result turns out that two quantity is essentially the same. And then we change, we few years ago, Santos and me change one sentence in that proof and get an improved bond. Uh, so this is currently the best. Uh, yeah, I would really love someone improve this band that I don't need to think about this anymore. Uh, but, but using this, we get n to 2.5 with, with KS, this is n square. So now I, I will go over how we get this result. Uh, the rest of the talk is, is mainly talking about how we come up with the algo. The proof is almost trivial. Just the algo is the interesting part. Uh, so in order to explain our algo, I need to first explain how people do this previously. So there is many previous algo to make a body isotropic. Our algo based on the paper by Loas and uh, Rampala. So the algo is this. Uh, you first start with a ball inside the set. Uh, one thing to uh, mention is we always assume our common set contains a tiny ball and is, is contained inside a large ball. Uh, I think this is necessary. At least the internal ball is necessary. The reason is imagine you, I give you a common set, but you don't tell me any ball inside. Then basically what happens is you can keep asking the membership oracle and the Members oracle can keep telling you no because it's somewhere you don't know where is it. 
So the internal ball is important. That's why we can start with a ball inside the cave. Uh, so the algorithm this we start with a ball. Let's say with radius t, uh, we will first, we will keep enlarging the ball until the ball cover the whole set. Uh, each step, we sample n points inside the, the k intercept ball. Initially, the ball is inside the set, so k intercept ball is just a ball. We know how to sample n points inside a ball. Uh, so, by some result by Sirswab and Wishenin, they prove it take only n sample to estimate the variance. This is why we need n sample. And, and what we do is after we estimate the covariant matrix, we transform the whole body such, a, such that K intercept B is isotropic. And then, and then we enlarge the ball. Yeah, there is one step left. Uh, you enlarge the ball by two. So this is the algo. And the key thing we are using is if K intercept B is isotropic, then K intercept two B is well wanted, namely uh, the the di the the lump square, the average lump square is n, and and the body the covariance of of the body is at least some identity. You can think this condition is is kind of in roughly same as you have a ball inside. It is not exactly the same, but this implies this result. And because we are just enlarging the ball certainly, there is a ball inside. But turns out you can prove something stronger. <clears throat> and, oh yeah, in fact, I have that sentence. Uh, uh, yeah, and then another fact we use, they use is we can sample a well the body in n group time. So what is the total one time of the algo? Uh, notice every time we enlarge the body by factor of two, so you should expect there is lot many step. More precisely, it's lot lot n but lot of something. Uh, and each step we need n sample, so you have n here. And each sample is sampling from a well wanted body because after you enlarge, we know the next step is a well wanted body. So it's n cube here. That's why the total one time is n four. Uh, and one thing to notice is uh, this running time is the best known, even assuming KLS. So, yeah, when I went to some common astronomy conference, sometimes people ask me, does KLS has any implication on sampling? And unfortunately, for, for sampling general, like I said previously, we don't know any implication. And so one good thing about this paper is showing KRS is indeed related to the capacity of sampling. So uh, this research is roughly at 2006. Uh, so at that paper, they, they put this paragraph in the paper. This is just a funny thing. This two picture is uh, Santos and Lovas at 2006. You can notice Santos is slightly different. Uh, yeah, so they say in their paper, they believe there is one extra improvement in the paper. If the KLS conjecture is true, we just need a little algorithm of making body isotropic. And at that time, they don't know what is the algo. And turns out the algo is something simple enough they should have noticed at that time. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but one thing to notice is this paper is showing in order to in order to make something isotropic, it suffice to study the cases where wanted, because this this every step you just need to sample from a well wanted body, you just need to make this well wanted body isotropic. So from now on, I will assume the body is already well wanted. We call well wanted mean the the trace of covariance is n, and the covariance is uh, at least identity. Uh, 
So the algo is something like this. Uh, yeah, let's say we have a well-wanted body. Uh, notice for a well-wanted body, you could still have some eigenvalue as large as what n. Remember what is well-wanted? Well-wanted is trace of covariance. So expectation of x squared. Oh, I am kind of assuming the body is uh, center. The, the center of gravity is zero. So the trace of covariance is n and the co log n o n. Uh, and the covariance is at least a constant. So you could still have some direction that is very large. And that is the reason why sampling is low on this form. If you have some direction very large, then if you doing a random walk here, then it take forever on those large direction. And so our idea is very simple because the algo is low because mainly because of those large direction. So what we do is just try to remove those large direction. Uh, so the algo is this, uh, how to, uh, how to remove, let me, let me remove those things here. Uh, so our algo will maintain a ball inside a body. The ball start with radius one. We know covariance larger than identity implies the unit ball is inside the body. B zero R is inside. We will maintain this invariant during the whole algo. So each step we will sample R square many sample. Uh, gradually we will enlarge the ball inside. So initially we will only sample a few sample and at the end we will sample and many sample. So after we uh, compute this, we use this to compute the empirical covariant matrix. Notice this empirical covariant matrix has, is really doesn't look like the covariant matrix. In particular, this is not full rank. This matrix, uh, so for those small dimension, you should expect this has nothing to do with the true covariance. Uh, but what we care about is the large dimension on the empirical covariant matrix. We look at all eigenvalues larger than n. And what we do is uh, we look at the space perpendicular. So in terms of picture, the V is here. Then we look at the perpendicular space V transpose. Oh yeah. I, and then what we do is we enlarge the body K on that direction. So you get a new body, the blue one. So question, Yinta. Yeah. Where are these uh, R square samples taken from? Uh, you mean Y N square? No, no, no. Where are they being taken from? This is from? Uh, from K. From K? Yeah. Okay. And, and are they generated by, uh, like, for each sample, you you start a new random walk? Yeah, yeah, just do a ball walk. Okay, so they're independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, where where is this B of uh, R coming from? B of R. B of uh, I don't know V comma R or v comma. that you define in the picture. You said you're going to maintain this invariant that. Oh, B0R. B0R, right. Oh, right. I'm saying I will maintain, I will prove later each step there is a ball inside the body with radius R. Uh -huh. Initially, this is true by the definition of well wanted. Mm -hmm. And because we are scaling up the small dimension, we will maintain that. Okay. Yeah, and each step will increase the R roughly by two. Uh, so roughly speaking, the intuition is this. Uh, in some sense, our algo is scale up all the eigenvalue less than n. We look at the space perpendicular to n and then scale that up. And so eventually you should expect all eigenvalue will converge to n-ish. Uh, and initially k is far from isotropic, but initially we only leave few sample. Uh, at the end, when k is 
I should chop it is easy to sample those set and we need more sample. So what will happen is at the end, every step will take same amount of time. So in some sense, we are balancing between how difficult to sample and how many sample we need. Uh, so what we will prove is uh, during the whole algo uh, covariance is less than n. Uh, this is kind of true as long as I prove to you the empirical covariance matrix is an accurate estimation for those eigenvalues larger than n. Uh, and another thing is, uh, again, this algo take roughly log many steps, log necessary log m. Oh, oh, for this version, it's log m because we know the eigenvalue bounded by n. Yeah, this version is exactly log n. Uh, and in some sense, the main thing we need to prove is two things. One is the empirical covariance matrix is accurate enough to estimate those large eigenvalue, and also we we'll maintain this invariance. Uh, there is a ball of radius out inside K. Uh, uh, certainly, we also need to find the capacity of this algo. Uh, so for the accuracy of empirical covariance, it is just follows by matrix channel of bound. Uh, yeah, it is done by matrix and channel of no, uh, something else. Uh, yeah, but the, the, we say it's something like this. Uh, Roughly speaking, you can ask, if you only have K sample, you can add the empirical covariance matrix is uh, one plus epsilon approximately to A, but with an additive term. The additive term is roughly trace A over K. This is just a standard application of matrix turn off, so I'm not showing here. Uh, but notice, for example, if you put K is N, and if we know a the if we know the origin body is isotropic, then chase a is n. In that case, then you get this is a small term. Uh, but for our case, we only have k sample. Uh, what uh, what we will show is turns out throughout the whole algorithm, chase a is less than r squared n. And if this is true. Then you can just put it into this formula. Chase A is R square N. And you have K is K is uh, what? Uh, K is R square in the last slice. And we uh, only care about the case epsilon is constant. So you see the empirical covariance is a constant approximation of A with an additive term N. So you can detect all the eigenvalue larger than n. Uh, so this is a quiz. How to prove this? Anyone see? I have enough time to wait for ten minutes. <laughs> anyway, the, the reason is just this. Uh, remember, each step we scale up some dimension by roughly factor of two. And so each step, oh, I guess I should, uh, let me go back to last slide in case you forget. Each step we scale up some dimension by factor of two and we scale up out by factor of two ish. Uh, so, so each step trace A, remember this is coherence where you scale up the body by two is scale up by four and I'll scale up by two and you end the L from an R square less than N. Yeah, so trace, yeah, I guess just that to implies trace A is, oh, and in, initially trace A is N by the well under condition. So you have this. Yeah, so there's nothing to prove here. Uh, yeah, so you see the, the real thing to prove is just this. Uh, uh, during the whole algo, there is a ball inside the K. Maybe I should explain why we care about this. Uh, turns out, uh, if you have a body, uh, if you have a body, 
such that you have a ball of weightage out inside the body. Then what happens is you can take the step size for the ball walk is out over wood end. So if there is a larger ball inside body, we can take a larger step. And so the ball walk makes faster. And that's why we want large body. Large ball inside. And this one is kind of again proof by picture. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sorry, inside. What, what was lambda again? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I didn't define lambda before. Uh, lambda is the mass eigenvalue of the body, of the uh, covariant matrix. Lambda is lambda mass. So for our case, you should think lambda is n. I already say lamb you should initially the mass eigenvalue is n and because we left a scale of those dimensions so it's always n-ish. Uh, let me see. Remember what happened to the algo? We scale up all dimension with the variance less than lambda. You can think this you should just yeah, I should just put n here. And uh, and so what ha so this direction is v this is v perp. So by the definition, we know this dimension, the covariance on that dimension is larger than n. I mean restrict to restrict to the dimension v. So what happens is uh by some standard result there is a ball on that subspace of size lambda. And how about other dimension? Uh, by by the by the induction last step, we already proved there is a body of size r in the dimension we prep. And because we scale up that dimension by two, so now this step we have a ball of size two r here. Uh, so so now now it's just a geometry question. If I have a body, common set. This dimension we have a uh, we have a ball of size wood lambda and this dimension we have a ball of size two r. Then what is the largest ball inside? Yeah, by some calculation I don't what do it. Yeah, by some calculation you can prove there is a ball of two r ish inside. Yeah, it's just some explicit calculation. And this this is where there is some. Uh, yeah, I, I forget why there is some log n coming up. Uh, this, I think this log n is come from our choice of lambda instead of the film. Uh, yeah, but anyway, you can see this, this film is just some simple geometry consideration. Uh, so now we we have every component. So now we go back to the remember what is the result for uh ball walk. In general, the running time of ball walk is n square the mass eigenvalue over uh the step size square. Uh this uh this is known even without KLS. And now now what we know about wait, I think it's just N here. Uh let me see. Uh N square. Yeah, I think it's N okay, it's N lambda over delta square. And we know delta is uh R over wood N. And then we know lambda is n, so you get n cube over r square. Uh, and so each step, because there is a ball of size r inside and because the covariance has the n, we know each step take n cube over r square. Oh, this one is assuming KLS. Sorry, 
this is assuming KLS. Uh, yeah, so, and because each step we leave out square sample, so this cancel with that term. And so under KLS, each phase is n group. And this is why the whole algo is n group. But anyway, the, the intuition of the algo is pretty simple. It is just saying, we don't really let n sample to estimate coherence because for one thing, kind of we only care about the large dimension first. So if you first estimate those, then you get better on time. Uh, yeah, this is why I believe they should have noticed that before. Uh, so without KLS, then turns out we need isotropic constant for, for not just isotropic body. And, and turns out for long isotropic body, we have the KLS constant look like this. Uh, it depends on the full base lump of the coherent matrix. And if you apply this film instead of KLS, the, it gives the capacity of N 3.5. And, and if somehow someone improved the KLS constant, from beta equals to one fourth to someone something else. And turns out you can prove as long as you prove as long as you have an estimate of isotropic convex body, then you have a good estimate for any convex set. Again by something look like full base lump, but instead is uh, some P lump. And using this this result, uh it will implies the capacity of, of, of sampling is uh, slightly less than 3.5. So this is saying as long as there is any improvement on KRS, we have improvement on sampling. Yeah, so this is everything. I will only have one slide left. Uh, any other question? Yeah, but yeah, I, I yeah, I still amazed this how simple is this out go. Well, usually I plan to make sure this paper is less than ten pages. Just that I have finally have one stuff false paper less than ten page. But unfortunately, my co-author add more stuff inside. There is much harder result inside. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, I, yeah, I would really love to see if someone. Improve the KLS. There is so many experts in this this workshop. Here, let me give you yet another uh, motivation of KLS less than one fourth. Uh, yeah, there is obviously there is so many uh, motivation. For example, KL, improving KLS implies improving slicing, which is open for many decades. Uh, but but but. But I want to argue why one fourth is kind of special. So, uh, my real motivation is just show a picture of my student, how ten. Uh, so, so many of you probably know this result, uh, central limit theorem for convex set. The theorem say this: you have a convex body, and you randomly, you randomly find the direction x. And then you take the marginal on that dimension, and the central limit theorem so this is close to a uh, close to a uh, normal distribution. Uh, yeah, the current estimate is very precise. I forget what is that. Uh, but we don't know the tight uh, bound for this yet. Uh, so my student Halten and Santos and me make a conjecture, uh, how about can you prove a general central limit theorem? Instead of sampling a point according to a sphere, you sample according to an analog concave distribution. Uh, yeah, and we still conjecture the marginal is close to some normal distribution. Uh, there is an equivalent form of this I like more because it's more symmetric. It is saying given any two isotropic log concave isotropic log concave distribution, 
you take two uh, random sample P from distribution P a random sample Q from Q and you take the inner part of, uh, the conjecture is saying this this distribution is close to normal distribution uh, uh, because uh, notice we this version is grow and here because the lie of bound of W2 distance between a normal with, with, with standard duration would end is would end. So we conjecture is better than a lie of barn. And what we can show is, uh, we can show is uh, if someone improved the KLS beyond one over four, then, then this central limit theorem is correct. In fact, uh, if someone proves something like this, uh, instead of one fourth, you just improve the bound by, I forget what n or n, you just improve by a lot n better than, then it will implies this, this, this field. So at least this is a funny statement that, that is useful only after you improve the one fourth. Yeah, but obviously we don't know how to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, in the last few years, I've been trying to improve from fourth and end up by only getting a lot of film that is kind of equivalent to improving one fourth. There's a long list. This is the lightest one. Yeah, so it'll be like someone can prove that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Intap. Um, anyone have any questions for Intap? Okay. Yes, let me ask a question. Uh, uh, hi, Intat. Um, do you know in this generalized uh, conjecture, do you know to prove that, that um, this uh, P times Q is, is close to some, uh, say, any even distribution, some any non trivial bound that it's not just it's close to Gaussian, but close to something even? Oh, I, I never thought about this question. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. I, it looks, it looks like I, I worry that would I, oh, I should mention generalized CLT also implies back to improve KLS. And I worry your evenness will also even implies that. So. I think that even yeah. this is not trivial. Yeah, not yeah. Trivial. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was my impression. Just to get it even, it's already the problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have a question. Hey, Intet. Hey. Uh, so basically, like the general framework here has nothing to do with convex bodies. It just says that if you have a distribution such that it's easier to sample when it becomes more isotropic, yeah. then there is a framework to make it isotropic. And then, you know, for convex bodies, you need this exact dependence on how close to isotropic it is. So I'm just wondering if like, it's very likely that this framework has more applications. So I guess the first thing to ask is maybe for polytopes, for example, oh, yeah. you, you okay, can uh, say something new. Yeah, two, two, two weeks later, I will give you some package. Yeah, yeah two weeks later, I'm giving a talk on sampling on polytopes. So, yes. so is is it also the case that you improve like the polytope case because it's easier to sample from polytopes as they become more isotropic? I didn't. No, the the, uh, the the reality is fog is horrible for sampling for because of some computation issue. I will uh -huh. I will discuss that in that talk. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, what is horrible? Uh, ball walk. Oh, ball walk. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then and then there is all your papers with the like new stuff, but I, I I'm not sure how much they depend on isotropicity. Uh, th yeah, those those algorithms are very rare. Ah, I see, I see. Ah, yeah. so the best known I algorithm is a fine invariant. Yeah, I tell you, you are. Ah, I, I understand. Okay, and. And my second question is there is are these could these ideas be helpful if you just want to do PCA like you just want you know the top 
k eigenvalues slash eigenvectors yeah. could this be helpful somehow of a concept yeah yeah them probably yeah them i suspect that is the best known i i don't know any result on this direction so i am not sure yeah it's not it's not like if you want the eigenvalue together with the eigenvector for the top ones it's not clear to me you know if these ideas are helpful uh yeah i yeah i don't know uh but probably if you just want the eigenvalue then like this strategy seems to help because but, you know, but if you just you want top highest... one, maybe, maybe you just find a random direction and optimize over that direction yeah that's probably better i, I mean that's that, that, that's probably better if you want a very small number of top eigenvalues yeah and probably but if you know really like fast. the if you want like the root and top ones then it seems likely that you know this framework helps oh yeah but maybe that is a good help. no if you just want more even if you want more then you can offer gone to that direction and optimize again maybe this is a new sample algo mm. Yeah, I, I see. Know. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, thanks, Inta. Um, any any further questions? Actually, I, I have a question, Inta, just as someone who's not, I guess, in this area, but I'm curious. I mean, just from what you've written, you have this conjecture of the root n right at the bottom of the slide, but in principle, beta could be arbitrarily small, right? Beta could be zero. So does that does that mean that? Uh, yeah, that that will implies. Yeah, if beta is zero, I only get n to. I I may be getting. I don't know. Point. I think point lot or n to small one. I will get n to small one here, at least. I see, but I mean, I guess my question is just why. So why do you specifically conjecture their root n, um, uh, as at the bottom as opposed to because if beta is zero, then that's going to be even much better, right? Oh, because. Here, this body have that, this distribution have, have this same wood n. This is a normal distribution with wood n here. A normal distribution with variance n. So this distribution have, have diameter is effectively wood n. So the, this, the W2 distance of this normal distribution with a delta zero here is wood n. But so we're just saying this is offline. I mean, I guess I'm confused with oh. that when you compare with the theorem that you have highlighted in orange, where you say that the distance is O of n to the two beta. So I mean, in principle, beta could be smaller than a quarter, right? And oh, you have... oh, you're asking why is that just conjecture this as O one? Yeah, or yeah, something. So, root n is the oh, trivial oh, bound. Oh. Root root n holds trivially, so he's just saying, you know, if you want something which says that something non-trivial happens, then it happens at one fourth. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, James. Thank you. So back to like the question I said asked before, I just wanna like add that even if you have like a black box sampler and you want to avoid like errors due to like rounding errors, like, you know, computer rounding errors, it could be that this framework is helpful because, right, this is exactly what you want to, if, if you just want to compute the covariance matrix best based on some black box sampler, yeah. then it makes a lot of sense to run exactly this algorithm to avoid, you know, rounding issues. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, one day I will probably implement this if I am free. <laughs> okay, any final questions for Intep before we take a break? All right, so that's it. Let's thank Intep again and we will reconvene at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, which is in 40 minutes for those of you who are not, we're in different time zones. Thank you. Thanks.